All birds find shelter during rain, but if we have to talk about eagle, they avoid rain by flying above. So this circumstances actually makes us understand one important thing. The attitude of approaching a circumstances or situation really makes a difference. So if I have to put it in this word, suppose if there are a lot of things that's before you and it's very important what you really wanted in your life. So what to choose and what not to choose actually matters a lot and how do you approach Approach to the circumstances also matters a lot. So today I have come up to help you out to choose whether CSIR Net JRF or LS. So with no more delay, let's get started to the video. Okay, so if we have to talk about CSIR net JRF or LS, you have to choose any one of these two things. You have to take two things into consideration. One is going to be your educational qualification and the second is going to be the age limit. So first let's talk about the educational qualification. So educational qualification is very, very essential in making decision whether you can choose CSIR net JRF or LS. So let's check what are the qualifications. Okay. So who is eligible for CSIR net JRF only? You cannot apply for LS, you cannot become a professor if you're going to have all these degrees. So let's talk in detail. So be a person who is doing B, BS, BTech, B Pharma, MBBS in the final year or we can say who are waiting for your results or we can say result awaited candidates or category are eligible to apply only for fellowship which means people who are in the final year of any of these degrees, you are eligible only to apply for JRF. Even if you want to become a professor, you have to do your master's, then only you can go in for lecturership or professorship. The next one, these candidates are not eligible to become assistant professors. People who are belonging to this, you're not eligible to become assistant professor. If I have to talk about BSc honors who are in the final year, or who are waiting for the result and you have not got your degree, you are also not eligible to apply for both JRF or to be very specifically, I can say LS also. So those people are not eligible to apply for both JRF as well as LS. Then who can apply for LS? We'll talk about it. The second important thing you have to take into consideration is age limit, I told you. So we have already done a video on uh, who can who is eligible for CSIR Net Life Sciences. So here I'm just talking who is eligible for only JRF. If I have to talk about who is eligible for LS also, this is mattering a lot. So one should also consider the age limit. This is very important because your age limit matters a lot, whether you can choose your JRF or LS. Suppose if I have to talk about who can apply for JRF only or we can say LS, there is an age relaxation. Suppose if I have to talk about for JRF, we know that if, if we are talking in case of general, they have a maximum upper age limit of 28 years. So if you are in the age of 28, then you can apply for JRF and you can join any of the laboratories in India and you can work as a researcher or you can pursue your PhD. But suppose, ma'am, I have crossed about 28 years. Can I apply for JRF if you're going to ask me a question? I can say if you are belong to certain categories, then you are eligible. There is an age relaxation if we have to talk about for SE. ST, PWD and for women, if you're belonging to any of these categories, then there is an age relaxation, which means till 38, 33 years, very specifically, or we can say five years relaxation, you can apply for JRF. And ma'am, I'm belonging to OBC, NCL, if you're going to ask me a question. Yes, you are also eligible to apply for JRF to become a researcher. Three years relaxation is there, which means you can apply till 31 years. Suppose if you are a woman 
who whose age is around 35 let's take it as an example then you cannot apply for jrf you're only eligible to apply for ls if you have crossed 33 years along with your relaxation or if you're belonging to obc ncl above 31 years then you are not eligible to apply for jrf you are only eligible to apply for ls so age limit matters a lot so you can see LS can be selected if you are going to be about 28 years, very specifically, along with the relaxation, you can also check in as the upper age limit is very important for CSAR, NET, JRF. But if I have to talk about LS, if you want to become a professor or lecturer in a college, there is no upper age limit. So you can apply anytime. There's no stipulated age limit for becoming a professor. So age limit matters a lot and your educational qualification actually decides whether you can choose CSIR, NET, JRF or LS. Okay, now if I have to choose CSIR, NET, JRF, what are the benefits that I have? So let's talk about the benefits that you are going to get if you're going to choose CSIR net JRF. The very important thing is JRF usually have a greater cutoff when you compare it with LS. So you are more proficient and you would be knowing more things and it can fetch you a lot of opportunities for you. So that's one of the advantage. The second thing is you can achieve a good fellowship. So you can go in for CSIR fellowship, which is funded by CSIR. And you can work in any of the CSAR laboratory under a scientist as a JRF for first initial two years. And then you will be promoted as SRF where you will be given a stipendship or a fellowship. We can say for the first two years, one and two years, we can say you are going to get almost 31,000 per month. And the rest of the years as SRF, you'll be getting 36, 35 to 36,000 per month okay and it's also easy to pursue your phd from any of the renounced universities or the laboratories of your interest so to be very specific if you want to uh, pursue your phd this is one of the ways that can actually fetch you a phd degree for you so you can be eligible uh, to apply anywhere in the renounced universities or we can say in any of the CSIR laboratories or DRDO, anywhere else you can pursue your PhD. So it is one of the paying pathway which actually gives you a lot of opportunity. What's the other benefit if, if I'm going to apply for CSIR net JRF? So if we have to talk about in the upcoming years, already we are actually in that stage, PhD might become essential, which is very important essential for becoming a lecturer or assistant professor. I told you, if you are in the upper age limit, then you can go and apply for only LS. But now there's a situation, if you want to become a lecturer, now they are making it a crucial thing that you have to have your PhD degree. So in order to pursue your PhD degree, it's really important to have a fellowship. So JRF is another way which actually leads into uh, lecturership also. So, and clearing CSIR JRF, will also motivate you to get highest degree in your name. It's actually going to give you an advantage for you if you're going to clear that. And you are going to get financial independence to grow your career further. So we can we already know about the stipendship uh, for almost five years and it can be extensible based on the project that you're going to carry out. So it is going to make you a kind of independent, we can say. The next one is going to be, they always usually, if you're going to talk about CSAR laboratories, if there's going to be a candidate who has cleared CSAR net JRF, and a candidate who has cleared CSIR LS, LS will not be eligible for it, but a CSIR net JRF is always eligible. So CSIR laboratories and the scientists usually prefers CSIR net JRF candidates. Okay, the next advantage that you're going to have is after two years, definitely you'll be promoted as a senior research fellow and you'll be working in the same project, which will actually the stipendship will be increased as we talked about. And CSIR JRF anyways will make you eligible for lecturer, I told you. Suppose if you have cleared CSIR net JRF, it will ultimately lead you to pursue your PhD in a laboratory as a JRF and then as a S SRF. And finally, after completing your PhD, you can again become a lecturer or an assistant professor in a college, which means it is indirectly going to help you to become a professor also. The next one, passing CSIR net JRF will always add a weightage or a just gleam onto your resume, we can say. 
the very important thing about this is if you're going to be a professor or if we can talk about a JRF, it's going to give you a research experience because you're going to be a JRF and SRF for almost uh, three to five years. So you are going to gain experience on the area of interest that you're going to work on. And you'll be learning a lot of methodologies like the you'll be learning about techniques, you'll be learning about equipments, all this thing and scientific temperament. You'll be getting to know what really happens in the real life science, what exactly the project actually goes on if you're going to be a researcher. So you'll be learning during all these things in your PhD which will definitely going to make you a good professor or a lecturer later after completing your PhD. So these are some of the advantage or we can say the benefits of doing your CSAR net JRF. Suppose ma'am I have crossed my age limit but I have only one option which is going to be a professor. What's going to be the benefit for me? Yes, ultimately it's also going to help you out to become a professor or a lecturer or even an associate professor later after having an experience. So. We know that if you have crossed your upper age limit, then you are eligible for LS and you can join any of the universities in India or we can say the colleges in India and usually you'll get a salary of about rupees 25,000 initially and it may be extensible uh, usually between 25 to 45,000 in the beginning and later having an uh, exposure or experience to the subjects then you will be promoted as an associate professor in the college or even in the universities and we always believe that lecturership job and an assistant professor job is really Really, really prestigious in India. So this is one of the advantage or we can say the benefit that you're going to get if you are going to clear uh, JRF or we can say LS. The next one, the growth. You can really find candidates who have a dream career. Many used to be, want to become a professor or college or teacher in any of the institution we can say or in a college. So if that was your ambition or your areas of interest, if you want to become the head of the department or a vice chancellor in a college or university, then it's definitely going to be LS is going to help you. Vice chancellor, then you can actually go in for this one. You can join in any of the government universities or government colleges, as well as you can go in for private universities or private colleges, even in India. Next, salary. How about the salary? Actually, the pay bundle of any assistant professor at the government universities actually begins with a CTC of about, we can say, 6 lakhs. If you're working in a government institution or government universities and later after the experience, it can be extensible to 12 lakhs and even more than that. So if you have crossed your age limit, then this is going to be another important opportunities. So we have talked about CSAR, NET, JRF and LS. So both the things has equal benefits we can say. So I can say JRF and LS has their own benefits. The main important criteria is going to be the educational qualification you have to check in. And the next one is going to be the age limit. Based on the areas of interest or based on the career path that you wanted to choose. If you want to become a researcher, then you can choose your JRF. But if you want to become a professor, then you can go in for LS. So one can choose either a JRF and LS. So it's really important for all of you who are watching this video to choose wisely whether you want to become a researcher or a professor fulfilling check in for all the eligibility criteria very specifically the age limit. If you check in for the age limit if you're belonging less than 28 years you can go in for JRF if you are belonging or having an age limit upper than or above 28 years there's only one option which you can go for LS. So both has equal benefits as I already told you. So I have talked about what to choose, whether it's CSAR, NET, JRF or LS. So I'm giving you the answer for you guys. So you can choose which actually gives you a real passion for you to do, whether it's a professor or it can be a JRF. So I, I think all of you have uh, understood what I've talked about and I believe that this video is helpful for all of you who are watching this video. Thank you all of you for your time and thank you so much for joining and I'm going to meet you in the next video. Thank you all of you. Thank you.